everyone. Um, first, I'm going to take off my jacket, <laughs> and I want you to tell me what you think. Hi. <laughs> That's what I thought. That's actually what I thought. And it's actually a little bit disturbing because, um, you know, I get different responses when I wear this shirt. Like, if I wear it in an affluent, um, mainly white environment, I get a lot of kudos and hands up and I've done something right. But if I walk um, in Oakland, if I'm fortunate to see another African American walking down the street, um, I get, and you know, I want to have some triggers. This might trigger some stuff. If I sound a little cynical, forgive me. Um, but it's not intentional. But I get a little bit di different response. It's more like, hey, wait a minute. The way I speak is okay too. You know? Um, so I want to hear be, be here to represent for my cohorts, which are, um, which I'm calling African, Amer African diaspora, mainly descendants of slaves who have never quite made it past um, poverty. You know, me, myself, frankly, I've never made more than $40,000 a year, and I've done a lot of shit. I've done some good shit. And I always wonder why. So, um, more trigger stuff. I'm not a black male. Um, I was just told today that black women have it worse. I, I used to accept that, but I really don't accept that anymore. And with all due respect to the person who said it, it's just sort of an archetype out there that's false. I only gave myself 10 minutes for this because I wanted to make room for other folks. So I can't say half of most of what I want to say. But um, the person who said that was being supportive. Um, and I know where that's coming from, but I'm starting to reject that stuff. I'm starting to reject that I am the lowest on the totem pole. Um, and I reject that um, others are more privileged than me um, and that I don't have certain amounts of privilege. And I've um, made certain decisions in my career not to compromise beliefs that I have. And um, it has sort of like affected things in kind of a negative way. Um, I don't really, I mean, I can be very vivacious at times, but also I can be a bit shy. So I don't always laugh at jokes. And I certainly will not laugh at a joke that I think is, has any modicum and an iota of racism in it. That's just not going to happen. So that might make somebody feel a little bit um, uncomfortable, you know, a little bit um, uncomfortable in, in their zone. So I was going to come up here, and if somebody can tell me if I'm like over on time, please like um, let me know. But I just want to say that I'm noticing, you know, my my thing working in tech is somehow I've always slipped through the cra uh, cracks, even though I was the top percentile in um, English language, um, even in kindergarten, amongst a lot of little, um, excuse me, but. Um, Gosh, I have to be very careful with my language, but I'm just going to speak contemporaneously. Um, white girls, and um, you know, they were always telling me how they were prettier than me, et cetera, et cetera. And I read very early, did really well, um, but somehow no one ever really noticed. Um, and I was just content to be the smart person that I am. Um, I don't really toot my horn really big like that, because um, that's part of the capitalist sy system, by the way, that I really don't like. <laughs> um, but, so I just want to kind of like ask folks to see that maybe there's a little bit of unconscious racism or classism in the shirt that I'm wearing. Thank you! Uh, you're welcome. <laughs> And I get a lot of compliments and smiles on the street from mainly um, white people. And, you know, I get where it's coming from, but sometimes I just want to take it off. And it was a gift from my sister. Um, so other little issues. That I, I didn't, by the way, I want to say thanks to Ash Dryden for putting on this effing amazing conference, which I'm just so honored to be here. And also I want to give a shout out to some other sisters that I have, um, Shanley Kane, who is kick-ass amazing. I love her. She's supporting me. I've written two uh, pieces for uh, MVC. Um, so it's not that I have an issue with white women, but I just want to say that no white woman came up to me and said, hi, can I help make your career better? Hey, can I help you be better? No, in fact, I was actually undermined several times because they just were like, and I'm not talking, I'm probably preaching to the choir here, but in certain corporate and tech 
environments, it was sort of like, I just wasn't expected to be good. It was like, wait a minute, you, you can't be smart. There, there's something wrong here. So, you know, I just got overlooked. <laughs> And it, and it kind of, it was kind of sad. And, and I'm, I'm gonna, not saying that that's everyone, but that there's been a bit of a trend there, mainly in corporations. And I've worked for, for some pretty um, um, amazing tech firms as a temp here in San Francisco, but somehow like they'd be talking about like I know that, I know that, but somehow no one assumed that I knew this stuff. And if I tried to say I knew it, I was overexplained and etc. And it's just been very frustrating. So. Also, I think appropriation is really annoying. Like when I go into a mainly white space and I see folks like giving the hand bumps and talking, doing the, 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 the bump and you know, all this sort of like um, culturally, socially marginalized mannerisms and stuff that my, my people, which I'm not supposed to say my people recently, but I will say that because I, I have that love there and I want to bring everybody up. Um, basically uh, initiated, just naturally have done, but like look around, there are no brown people like me with kinky hair and dark brown skin that are actually doing that stuff. And that's kind of disturbing and it makes me not want to work in tech, as hard as it is anyway. And I'm very smart and right now I'm learning programming alone and it's really cool. And my mom um, was doing Fortran and other things like um, in the past and it's just, um, it was really, she would come home with hives from the stress of work. So it's not all easy for everybody out there. Um, I'm not saying it's easy for everybody at all. And this is difficult to even talk about. Um, so, and also I wanna say that like, if you see a name, okay, so I have five more minutes, wow. If you see, a, if there's a name on a resume that sounds black and somehow that person doesn't get seen, like I'm small, Davida Small, and I, I'm a really good writer and I write really good cover letters and I take a lot of time. But sometimes I think maybe I was overlooked because my last name is Small. You know, that's kind of like a black name. Hmm, we don't really want to deal with her. Then I had, um, so it's just like that's kind of unconscious kind of stuff because maybe I would be out of their culture zone. Um, also, I had an interview with this um, marketing, like email marketing thing, viral marketing thing that was right before things were really hitting in the 90s. And man, okay, we all have to interview with three folks. I know that. That's cool. But then she was like, I mean, I really did well in the interview. interview. And then she was like, you know what? You're really good, but you know what? Write an essay. Would you just write an essay for me? Um, I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm what? Just, just write an essay on like, what this meant to you, what this interview was. So I write this long uh, essay. It was like a litmus test, you know? And um, maybe all of you have had to do that. Actually, I'm not going to worry about you guys right now. <laughs> I've also it, get thrust in the caretaker role a lot, so I'm going to let that go. But. Um, yeah, it, 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 I got no response back, you know, it's just, I feel like sometimes I have to jump through a lot of hoops that I'm really bored of jumping through, don't want to do that anymore. Um, I had a whole bunch of other stuff that I thought, you know, the, the nervous smiles and stuff, like, um, the pitying smiles, I don't get it, I don't, you know, don't look, there's nothing to feel sorry for, I, I'm, I'm fine. Um, and so I'm just, I hope you understand I'm saying this from love, actually, and not accusation, but I'm just hoping like we can get to a place where people who are from the hood, at risk, ghetto, all these horrible to me pejoratives, um, somehow bring them, us, into the fold and just have that vibrant diversity, which I think we all really want to have, and we're really using it already, you know? So, um, yeah, I, I thank you for, for having me here, and um, it was it's a great opportunity, and upward and onward.